So if you were trapped in an abandoned restaurant with an actual band of bloodthirsty animatronics trying to hunt you down, what would you do? These demented machines demand a constant supply of unsuspecting victims for their blood feast. But this time, it looks like they've picked on the wrong janitor. By the end of the night, he's going to turn them into prey. So get ready for some major mechanical mayhem, because we're here to break down the mistakes made, <laughs> what you should do, and how to beat the possessed animatronics in Willy's Wonderland. This small town is hiding a dark secret, and just passing through could cost you your life. On a sunny afternoon out in the middle of nowhere, this quiet guy wearing a leather jacket is speeding down the country roads, when suddenly, all four of his tires are blown out by a mysterious spike strip. After a while, a conveniently timed tow truck arrives, and the talkative driver agrees to help him out. He doesn't realize it yet, but he's about to end up in a deadly conspiracy involving demented killers and demonically possessed animatronics. And the whole town is secretly in on it. At the garage, he finds out that his repairs are going to cost around $1,000, but the mechanic only accepts cash, and there aren't any working ATMs in town. Thinking it through, the man asks if he's willing to work for the money, and the quiet guy silently nods in agreement, but that was his biggest mistake. The driver takes him to Willy's Wonderland, where they meet the owner, Tex Makadu. The place is run down and covered in graffiti, but Tex here says that he wants to restore it to its former glory, offering to pay for the repairs to the quiet guy's car if he spends the night cleaning it up. Once upon a time, the restaurant would host children's birthday parties and family-friendly fun, but these days, the animatronics are all in a state of disrepair, quietly standing up on stage as if they've been waiting for years to put on one last show. After showing him the cleaning supplies and reminding him to take breaks, Tex leaves the janitor to get started, chaining the door shut from the outside as he goes. Meanwhile, this local girl Liv and her painfully incompetent friends decide to head to Willie's and burn the place down. They know the truth about what's really going on there and want to put an end to it once and for all, but by the end of the night, only one of them is going to be left alive. The janitor starts cleaning up around the restaurant until his watch goes off, letting him know that it's time for a break. While enjoying some of his favorite soda, he discovers an old pinball machine tucked away in the corner. It turns out that this guy really likes pinball, but before he can fire it up, his watch goes off again, and for now, it's time to get back to work. The guy goes back to mopping up the main room, when suddenly, he senses danger. Turning around to see the seven-foot-tall animatronic Ozzy Ostrich standing right behind him, the creature lunges forward, slicing his face open with its beak, and instantly sends the janitor into a furious rage. Snapping the mop handle over his knee, he starts putting the beatdown of a lifetime on Ozzy here, taking it to the ground and pummeling it over and over again in the head as a shower of oil and sparks covers the room, until finally tearing out its metal spine and throwing it to the floor. The first battle is over, and that makes one animatronic down with seven more to go. Now before we get too deep into the video, I wanted to give a shout out to our friends over at Dragon City. We cover a lot of scary things here on How to Beat, but I don't think we've ever touched on the flying murder machines that are dragons. Dragon City is a free-to-play mobile game where you build your very own dragon realm by collecting, hatching, and evolving over 1,000 unique dragons. I'm talking about alien dragons, water dragons, angry dragons, even Christmas dragons and cyclops dragons. We give you the edge every week against horrifying opponents, but when it comes to dragon fighting, you're on your own to make a name for yourself. Test your dragon's might in player versus player battles against other dragon masters to claim supremacy on the leaderboard. Dragon City has an impressive 450 million downloads, so you're joining a massive world with a truly expansive player base. If PvP isn't your thing though, the game is also filled with adventure brimming with captivating quests, age-old legends, and mythical creatures. Download Dragon City by clicking the link in the description or scan the QR code and get a special bundle with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the epic Ovi Dragon to get you started. Thanks again to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. And now, back to the show. Okay, this is completely insane. This janitor here is officially in the middle of an animatronic nightmare, 
and it looks like all of the remaining seven of these zany characters are about to be coming for his blood. There's absolutely no way that he could have seen a sneak attack from possessed Chuck E. Cheese here coming. But with that being said, if he'd been paying attention to his surroundings before he ended up there, then he might have recognized some of the warning signs that everything in this town wasn't as family friendly as it seemed. First off, this tow truck driver here was incredibly suspicious from the start. According to the sign that they passed on their drive-in, Willie's Wonderland is located in Hayesville, North Carolina, a small town with a population of only about 300 residents. With so few people around, what are the chances that the one guy coming down the road happens to be the town's tow truck driver and mechanic? and that he showed up right after the janitor here hit a conveniently placed spiked strip that blew out all four of his tires. Then on top of that, he just so happens to know a guy who's willing to let him work it off that night and pay him cash under the table? If nothing else, I'd be worried that this guy was running a scam to drum up business and be keeping a close eye out for any more red flags that might start showing up. Although the several missing persons reports hung up in his garage would have me concerned that the truth could be something even worse. Unfortunately, he had to go figure out the hard way that these animatronics want him dead. But now that he knows the truth, what should he do next? If it were me, my first instinct here would obviously be to try to escape, but there's a problem. He's about to realize that he's locked inside, and with the windows boarded up, there's no way for him to get out yet. Which means that he has only two other choices. Try to hide out somewhere and avoid any more attacks until the morning, or get ready to fight. Whatever he chooses, with such limited space to work with and no one else around to use as a meat shield, it's most likely only a matter of time before he's forced into another confrontation with one of the characters. The good news here is that based on the dog tags hanging from his rear view mirror and trunk full of energy drinks, it looks like this guy might have some kind of military background which should hopefully mean that he has the skills to survive the night. With Ozzy down, there are still seven more animatronics left to go. And if we're going to come up with a plan to fight back, first, we need to understand our enemy. Growing up, you probably attended a birthday party or two at Chuck E. Cheese's. But what if those wholesome animatronics suddenly went rogue? An animatronic is a mechanical puppet designed to resemble characters for our entertainment. They can be autonomous or human controlled and use a system of pneumatic or hydraulic actuators to create realistic movements. To give them their lifelike appearance, materials like latex, silicone, polyurethane, and plaster are built around a steel or aluminum skeleton with electrical components and wires acting as the character's nervous system. Sometimes they're even equipped with cameras and sensors which would allow them to interact with their environment. Once you know how they work, defeating them should be easy. Disrupting their power supply, gumming up their actuators, killing them with fire or simply getting them wet should stop them in their tracks. You'll just need to get creative about using whatever opportunities that you have at your disposal. Keep this in mind in case you ever end up locked with eight insane robots like the janitor here, and you might just survive the night. Now, so far, only Ozzy Ostrich here has gone on the offensive, but with one character down, it stands to reason that they'll all be coming after him before the night is over. That's why, if it were me, I'd try to find a way to disable the rest before they even started moving. If this guy can search the place and find any spare electrical cables, rope, chain, even duct tape, then it could be worth a shot to try restraining the remaining characters right now while they're still offline. That way, they'll already be incapacitated by the time that they turn on, effectively eliminating the threat before it even existed. Alternatively, he could try attaching something noisy like his empty soda cans either directly to the characters themselves or at different choke points in the building, which would allow him to easily keep track of their movements throughout the night and know whether another sneak attack might be coming. During the downtime before the next fight, he could also use any furniture like the tables and chairs around the restaurants to create barricades or traps in strategic locations, making it harder for the characters to move around freely and get the jump on him. 
they're most likely not going to be very agile either, so doing something as simple as spreading soapy water from his mop bucket all over the floor in the main room could easily be enough to trip them up. In terms of offensive options, the janitor's closet should be full of flammable liquids and even aerosol spray cans that he could use to torch these creeps. All that he'd need is a flame, which he could get from the kitchen if the gas lines are still working. He'd just have to be careful that he didn't accidentally set the whole place on fire, since right now, he's got no way to get out of there. A safer idea might be to try to lure the characters into the kitchen once they attack, and then spray them down with water from the sink, frying their circuits, and hopefully weakening or straight up destroying them with nothing but some good old fashioned H2O. As a final thought, I'd also consider trying to find a way to use the building's electricity system against them, either by overloading their electrical components or by causing a blackout and leaving them without a source of power. The guy may have won the first round, but things are about to get even crazier before the night is over. After taping up his wound, the janitor tosses what's left of Ozzy into a garbage bag and goes to take out the trash, only to realize the door is chained shut from the outside. It looks like he won't be going anywhere just yet, but he'll have to worry about that later because that's when his watch goes off, reminding him that it's time for another break. Heading to the kitchen, he guzzles down another soda and gets back to cleaning off that pinball machine until the alarm goes off again, calling him back to work. This time, the janitor decides to clean up the men's room and can immediately see that he has his work cut out for him. The place looks as good as you might expect with grime and graffiti covering every surface, but with a little bit of hard work and elbow grease, he eventually has it looking completely spotless. Just as he's finishing up, he hears the animatronics start singing their birthday song from out in the main room and decides to go check it out. Somehow, the entire stage of puppets has come to life, but the janitor flips a switch which seems to shut them down. There's just one problem. Gus Gorilla is missing, and that's when he hears the bathroom door slam shut on its own. Doubling back, he sees that somebody's already messed up his hard work by writing it's your birthday and what looks like blood on one of the mirrors. The janitor here is more annoyed than concerned, and when a robot voice challenges him to a game of hide and seek from somewhere in the room, he sees it as nothing more than a chance for sweet revenge. One by one, he kicks open the stall doors as the creature continues to mock him, making all kinds of violent threats. Finally, he kicks open the last door, but gets confused when it seems like there's nothing inside. All of a sudden, the gorilla swings down from above, kicking him in the chest and sending him crashing backwards into the wall. The janitor responds by absolutely teeing off on this thing hitting it with a combinations of elbows and jabs that would make a UFC fighter proud. As they battle it out, the gorilla throws him into a stall, but he counterattacks with a plunger straight to the face, slamming it into the walls before forcing it to bite down onto a urinal and curb stomping it to death. Unfortunately, his nice, clean bathroom is now covered in grease, but on the bright side, that makes two animatronics down with six more to go. Okay, overall, this was pretty much just a sick beatdown, and it's starting to look like this guy doesn't really need my advice, but I still want to point something out that I might have done differently, just for those of us who aren't as naturally badass as the janitor here. He had no other choice than to throw down with Ozzy Ostrich, since that one snuck up on him when he was mopping up the floor. This time, though, things were a bit different. Gus Gorilla here tried to lure him into a trap in the bathroom, but a trap only works if you fall for it. Thinking it through logically, this guy really had no reason to go back into the bathroom at all. Instead, I might have tried to fasten the door shut with some rope, wire, or chain from the kitchen or supply closet and simply left Gus in there to rot, effectively removing him from the board without any need for a direct confrontation. Something else important to notice here is that, so far, only one of the characters has attacked at a time. This could mean that maybe they only have enough power to run each character separately and can attack as a group, either right now or at all. Come to think of it, where exactly are they getting their power from anyway? Since they can move around the building freely, this indicates that they each most likely have their own built-in battery pack somewhere on their bodies. This is good news for us because it gives us a chance to end any future fights quickly 
and easily, simply by finding their off switch or by unplugging or damaging the character's battery. Going forward, I'd take a close look at the bodies of Gus and Ozzy here and try to figure out where their power source is so that I'd know where to direct my attacks when the next battle breaks out. After taping up his battle wounds, he takes what's left of the gorilla over to the door in a garbage bag and throws it down next to its friend. As he turns around, he notices the animatronics leader, Willy Weasel, staring directly at him. But their showdown will have to wait until later because right now it's time for another soda break. This time, he finds finally gets to play a little bit of pinball and crushes another can before getting back to work. The janitor doesn't know it, but Liv and her friends have just arrived outside with a truck bed full of gas cans. They quickly surround the building with flammable liquid, but just when this guy Aaron here is about to light the place up, Liv stops him, saying that they need to get the janitor out first. Spotting him through the window, Liv gets his attention and tries to tell him what's going on, only for him to ignore her warnings and silently go back to his business. The others are ready to leave him, but Liv here decides that she's going in, ordering her friends to keep watch from outside while she finds the janitor and gets him to safety. Liv somehow makes her way into the building's air vents and begins crawling around inside, but she's about to find out that she's not really alone. Suddenly, one of the rogue animatronics bursts around the corner right behind her. It's Artie Alligator, and she crawls for her life as it comes racing after her, gnashing its metal teeth. Luckily, she manages to hold it off long enough to escape out of the vents, but nowhere is safe in Willy's Wonderland. Looking around, Liv notices that she's landed in some kind of fog-filled fairy forest, and to make matters even worse, there's something stalking her from the shadows. That's when the siren Sarah animatronic appears right behind her, but Liv here isn't going down without a fight. She quickly unloads a nasty right hook, but the creature is too acrobatic to hit, dodging her strikes like Neo from the Matrix and scuttling backwards up the walls. After disappearing into the trees, it rushes forward with an inhuman burst of speed, taking Liv by surprise and dragging her out of sight. Okay, I guess that Liv here was pretty confident in her boxing skills because she decided to go in completely unarmed despite knowing that killer robots were waiting for her inside. If it were me, I would have tried to bring any weapon that I could get my hands on, even if it was something as simple as a metal pipe or a baseball bat. That way, I'd be able to give myself a better advantage in the fight. Of course, her best bet the whole time was to just never go in there at all. But since she's determined to save the janitor here, and he's not listening to her advice, she probably felt like she didn't have a choice. Hey Liv, here's a tip. Instead of just standing there like a deer in headlights when Siren Sarah showed up, maybe you should have at least tried to keep track of her movements around the room. That way, you could have better predicted where she'd attack from next. Better yet, why not put your back to the wall to limit her angles of approach and keep moving for an exit as quickly as you can. You know, instead of waiting around in the middle of the room for her to get the jump on you. Liv's got the fighting spirit though, but her strategy could definitely use some work. Hopefully the janitor here can show her how to get things done before it's too late. Hearing her screams, the janitor makes his way over to the forest to investigate what happened. Just then, Liv falls down from the ceiling right on top of him, explaining how she managed to fight the creature off and saying that they need to leave right away. But instead of listening, he silently turns around and goes back to his job as if nothing even happened. Outside, Liv's friends start to get worried and decide to go up on the roof looking for a way to get in. The conversation about what to do quickly escalates into an argument that ends with this guy Chris here tackling his friend Bob straight through the ceiling and sending the whole group crashing down into a ball pit. Liv hears the commotion and is immediately furious at them for not waiting outside but gets distracted when the animatronics on stage suddenly come to life. Drawing a knife, she rushes towards them looking to get her revenge, only for the janitor to stop her at the last second, silently throwing her over his shoulder and carrying her away. That's when the others notice that he's already managed to kill two of them and decide that their best chance for survival is to follow him back to the kitchen, except for Kathy and her boyfriend Bob here, who quietly sneak away to the super happy fun room for a private party of their own. In the kitchen, Liv reveals that everything that Tex told the janitor here was actually a bald-faced lie. The truth is that he was trapped there as a human sacrifice meant to feed the animatronics. And now it's time for him to know why Willy's Wonderland really shut down. It turns out that the original owner of the place was actually a notorious serial killer, and he specifically hired a crew of seven more demented maniacs to work there. Using the costumes, they would lure innocent families into the super happy fun room, only to 
brutally murder them all and secretly dispose of the bodies. When the police eventually caught on, the killers decided to end things themselves, striking a deal with the devil so that their souls could possess the animatronics and continue to prey on their unsuspecting victims. After 10 years, Tex purchased and reopened the restaurant but was quickly forced to shut it down when the unexplained attacks began again. However, instead of tearing the place down, Tex here decided to get in on the deal himself along with his friends, the town's sheriff and the mechanic. Just as the kids finish their explanation, the animatronics come back to life out in the main room, but this time, Nighty Night seems to have disappeared. Willie here starts singing a creepy song about how these six little chickens are going to get eaten by the weasel. And while they're distracted, the knight sneaks up from behind, impaling Aaron straight through the chest with his massive sword. That makes one victim down with ten more to go. Okay, this is not good. These idiots here ignored every warning sign, and now one of them is dead, with the rest soon to follow. Maybe at some point between the animatronics coming to life on their own, and singing not one, but two whole songs about how they're going to kill everyone before they attack. It might have been a good idea to get ready for a fight. Also, when they came out of the kitchen, they could clearly see that Nighty Knight here had exited stage left, decided to go solo. So that should have been a bit of a red flag, don't you think? I don't know. Maybe I'm just spitballing here, but one thing's for sure. That guy who just took a giant sword through his abdomen could have definitely benefited from a little bit more situational awareness. It's too late for him now, but his friends can still stand a chance if they just smarten up. If it were me, my number one goal would be to get out of there now. The front door is still locked, but the good news is that they could easily get back out the way that Liv got in simply retrace her steps while getting the janitor here to handle the fighting. Climb up into that air vent, crawl for your life, and you should be home free. If they're going to fight instead, then their best bet is probably to arm themselves with weapons from the kitchen and maintenance closet. Stick together and support the janitor while he handles most of the dirty work. They're not all trained fighters, but they do have numbers to their advantage. So the smartest thing would be to group up and take the fight to these freaks now before they have the chance to pick them off one at a time. Of course, there is one more thing that they could try. Now that we know that these characters are possessed by evil spirits from a dark ritual, if they manage to make it out alive, then they could bring in someone like Father Amorth to defeat them with his holy powers. It'd probably be the first time that someone ever performed an exorcism on a bunch of animatronics, but if it works on ordinary people, then there's no reason not to try. Panicking, this nerdy guy Dan slips in his friend's blood, narrowing avoiding having his own head lopped off by the knight. Liv here shoves the robot down, opening up a window for her other friends to escape, but the knight quickly recovers, ready to claim its next victim. It looks like they could really use some help from the janitor, but unfortunately, he's on his soda break, so they'll have to fend for themselves for now. While he's busy playing pinball and Liv is battling it out with the knight, the rest of the animatronics decide to go on the hunt. Dan takes cover in this room with a strobe light, only to come face to face with Tito Turtle and Siren Sarah. Terrified, he crawls backwards toward the wall in an attempt to hide, but the creatures toss him in the foam pit and begin eating him alive. That makes two victims down, with nine more to go. In another part of the building, Chris here ducks into the arcade and quickly hides inside of this rocket ship game. Pulling out his phone, he tries to call the sheriff for help, but as soon as he tells her where they are, she instantly hangs up the phone. Chris immediately calls back, and this time she lets it go to voicemail, but when Sheriff hears that Liv is there with them, she grabs her shotgun and tells the other officer that they have to go. Just then, Cammy Chameleon comes walking into the room, telling Chris that he doesn't need to be afraid, and promising that she's not a killer like the other animatronics. She preys on his sympathy, explaining that all she really wants is to be free from her horrifying robot body. For some reason, this idiot here actually believes her, agreeing to help her if that's what she needs. It's a huge mistake, but the truth is that he's not going to live long enough to regret his decision. Okay, these kids are downright stupid for splitting up. 
Pretty much their one and only chance of survival was sticking together so that they couldn't be hunted down one by one. Which is exactly what's happening now. Dan here might be the biggest idiot of all for trying to hide in the dark room with the strobe light. This would obviously be completely disorienting and make it nearly impossible to survive an attack, but it doesn't look like he was putting up much of a fight anyway. After seeing him instantly crap his pants instead of even trying to fight back, I have to ask, why did he even get himself into this situation in the first place instead of just staying home? The only thing that he was good for was serving as a meat shield for his more courageous friends. And now that he's dead, he can't even do that. Chris here isn't much better. I mean, what is he thinking, revealing himself to the chameleon given what he knows about these creatures? Hello! When a possessed animatronic tries to lure you out by saying that it's not as bad as the others, what that obviously means is that it's actually much worse. Coming out of hiding is the absolute last thing that he should have done, and if it were me, I would have either stayed put or tried to run out of there while using the arcade cabinets for cover. With any luck, he could make it to the exit, find a way to lock the creep inside, and live to fight another day. Liv is obviously the most capable out of the group, but going up against a 7 foot tall animatronic knight still isn't going to be easy. For her, the most important thing to focus on is going to be disarming him, since getting rid of that sword will be the easiest way to even the odds a little. I'd suggest using the furniture around the room for cover and try to knock the knight off balance before attacking his sword arm and hopefully forcing him to drop his weapon. I'd also be looking for a weapon of my own, like one of the mic stands from the stage or even some chairs that I could fling at him. These kids are already dropping like flies, but if they focus on exploiting any opportunities that they have, then they just might be able to pull through. Back in the main room, the knight is about to kill Liv here, but lucky for her, the janitor's break is finally over. Just as the animatronic is about to strike, he lunges at it from behind, knocking the sword out of its hand and slamming it into the wall over and over again. With the robot stunned, the janitor throws it to the ground, taking up its sword and slices its head clean off, covering himself in grease and making three animatronics down with five more to go. Liv here is impressed, but on the stage right behind her, the janitor can see that only Willy Weasel is still there and the others have disappeared. Meanwhile, Kathy and Bob are still having super happy fun time when she notices Artie Alligator staring right at them. Suddenly, the animatronic rushes across the room straight towards them and immediately begins eating Bob alive, showering Kathy in his blood. Terrified, she tries to make a break for it, only to realize that the door is locked, leaving her with nowhere to run. With Bob dead, the creature turns its attention to her next, and that makes four victims down with seven more to go. Okay, that's just embarrassing. These two boneheads couldn't have picked a worse time or place to get it on, but thankfully, Artie here came along to remove them both from the gene pool. Hey, Bob and Kathy, you guys f up. The truth is that these idiots were doomed from the start. First of all, even going within five miles of this place was an absolutely horrible idea. When they knew damn well that there were a small army of demonically possessed, cannibalistic animatronics waiting for them inside. If they didn't come to fight, then what the hell were they even doing there? Knowing what they know, they should have moved out of this one horse town altogether and never looked back. After all, the employment opportunities here clearly aren't the best and they always could have supported themselves by starting an online business if you catch my drift. To make matters worse, not even five minutes had gone by before they decided to completely split up from the group. Did they somehow forget that the whole reason why they came here was specifically to burn the place down because of the murderous demon robots that were living inside? Seriously, that's a level of stupid that's genuinely hard to achieve, and I'd almost be impressed if it weren't for the fact that it got them both killed. They didn't stop there. These morons actually saw one of the killer machines standing in the corner of the damn room and did precisely nothing about it. Unreal. They had every opportunity to run for the door, fight it off two on one, or even use the other person as a meat shield and make a break for it. But they made the most horror movie delinquent decision of all time by choosing to just keep going at it. And now they're both gator food. Nice work, you two. When you decide to ignore the possessed animatronic alligator in the room, only for it to end up killing you both, Bob and Kathy, you guys f up. 
Out in the hall, Liv and the janitor can hear the sounds of her screams, and he immediately kicks down the door. Unfortunately, it's too late to save them. Artie Alligator comes running over looking for a fight, but the janitor wrestles it to the ground like Steve Irwin. He instantly starts pummeling the gator with his fists, before prying open its jaws like King Kong did in that fight with the V-Rex, reaching into its mouth and pulling out a circuit board to finish the job. That makes four animatronics down, with four more to go. While the sheriff and her assisting officer are driving to the scene, she fills him in on more of the details about how this whole situation came to be. According to her, they had no other choice but to strike a bargain with the creatures, offering them unsuspecting travelers as food so that they'd leave the rest of the town alone. One night, they sent a family in as a sacrifice, only to find out in the morning that their daughter had somehow survived, feeling sorry for her. The sheriff here decided to take the kid in, and she grew up to be none other than Liv herself. This explains why she's so determined to burn the place down, and also why the sheriff actually cares about saving her life. Back at the restaurant, Liv here walks in on Chris and Cammie in the arcade. Chris starts to tell her that everything's fine, but that's when the creature shoots out its tongue and snaps his neck like a twig, killing him instantly. That makes five victims down with six more to go. The janitor comes in and squares up for a fight, only to realize that it's time for another soda break, and hands live her knife before walking straight back out of the room. The two of them battle it out while the janitor here goes back to playing some pinball. Fighting for her life, Liv kicks the robot in the chest and makes a break for the door, but the creature trips her with its disgusting tongue and drags her back across the ground. She manages to fight it off, retrieving her knife and stabbing it several times in the body, but the chameleon easily overpowers her and forces her back into a corner. It looks like lights out for Liv here, but the janitor's break ends just in time. Returning to the arcade, he lassos Cammy with a cable and begins slamming it back and forth into the game cap cabinets, but for some reason decides not to kill it then and there. Instead, he starts dragging the robot back down the hall where they're confronted by Siren Sarah and Tito Turtle. It's a two-on-one, but that's bad odds for the animatronics, and he knocks them both out with one punch each, not even breaking a sweat. They make it back to the front door, but that's when they run into the sheriff, and she isn't there to save the day. Holding the janitor at gunpoint, she forces him to set the animatronic free and immediately begins apologizing to Willie, pleading with him to take the janitor and not harm anyone else. The other officers question it at first, but decides to play along when she reminds him that if the animatronics aren't fed, then no one in the county is safe, not even his wife and newborn child. Liv refuses to leave without her new friend, insisting that he's going to kill all of the robots anyway, but the sheriff here doesn't believe it. After handcuffing the janitor, she orders the other officer to take Liv down to the station and then come back for her, saying that everything should be over by the time that he gets back. Inside, Cammie and Sarah circle the janitor in, ready for a fight. Without saying a word, he kicks the jukebox and gives them some music to dance to, waiting for them to make the first move. Siren Sarah cartwheels towards him, but he counters with a swift headbutt and follows it up by body checking Cammie to the ground. Leaping on top of Sarah, he breaks the robot's neck with his knees before busting out his handcuffs and twisting Cammie's head completely around, killing them both. That makes six animatronics down with two more to go. Okay, the janitor here really should have killed Cammie Chameleon when he had the chance. I wouldn't expect him to make such a rookie mistake, and the truth is that he must have had some other plan for what he was going to do with her. Although, since he's a man of so few words and isn't in the habit of explaining his motivations, I'm not really sure what that plan could have been. With that being said, now that the front door is finally open, this creates some more possibilities for how he can finish the fight once and for all. Right now, Willy Weasel and Tito Turtle are the only two animatronics left standing. We have no idea where Tito is, but Willy is still right there on stage, so at least he's accounted for. Personally, I wouldn't want to get in another scrap with these freaks unless I absolutely had to, and especially not with their boss, Willy here. He's obviously going to be the toughest of all, and that's why if it were me, I'd be looking at a more creative approach for the final battle. 
So here's what I'm thinking. Using materials from the kitchen and janitor's closet, I'd try to finish what Liv here started and just set the whole place on fire with Willie and Tito still inside. Not only would doing this hopefully burn them to a crisp, but it might also activate the fire suppression system and short their electronics out with water from the sprinklers. This way, whether it's the fire or the water that ends up getting them, the nightmare will finally be over and the janitor here won't even have to get his hands dirty or not any more dirty than they already are at least. If for some reason this doesn't work out, there's one last thing that I might try. The sheriff here is still sitting in a truck right outside and she's got a fully loaded shotgun in there with her. If he could sneak out to the car and get the jump on her, then he could take the shotgun for himself and use that to finish the job. Willie might be tough, but I've got a feeling that he isn't tougher than a 12 gauge. So hitting him with the boomstick could be another easy way to finish this once and for all if he can manage to get to it, that is. He's almost made it to morning, but there's still one last fight standing in his way. And this guy isn't the type to leave before the job is done. Meanwhile, the officer is driving Liv back to the station when suddenly they're surprise attacked by Tito Turtle. Before the officer can even react, the robot drags him out of the car and begins eating him alive, making six victims down with five more to go. Thinking quickly, Liv here grabs the man's shotgun and gets ready to start blasting, only to find out that the weapon isn't loaded. Still, this doesn't mean that it can't do some damage, and she uses the gun like a club to temporarily incapacitate Tito but runs back towards the restaurant without finishing him off. The janitor here bags up his latest kills before immediately going back to speed cleaning the place like he's actually still determined to do the job. And finally, his work here is done, and the restaurant looks like it's ready for business, but there's still Willy Weasel left to deal with. Their final showdown is going to have to wait though, because it's break time, baby. Back in the kitchen, he guzzles down another soda, busts out some sick dance moves, and finally beats the pinball high score. It's the only victory that really mattered, but with that out of the way, it's time for one last fight. When he goes out front to throw away the last bag of trash, the sheriff here spots him and forces him back inside, where they notice that Willy Weasel has disappeared. Suddenly, the lights in the restaurant briefly go out, and that's when Willy appears right behind her, tearing the woman in half with one swipe of his paw. That makes seven victims down with four more to go. Unfortunately, her shotgun is also broken in the attack, meaning that the janitor is going to have to finish this the old-fashioned way. In an instant, the creature rushes towards him, throwing him into a red birthday button on the wall and covering the entire place in a shower of confetti. Disoriented, he's powerless to fight back as Willie slashes him across the back, chest, and arms before tossing him into the ball pit. Instead of finishing him off, Willie walks away, deciding to save him for later. But that was its biggest mistake. Once it's gone, the janitor crawls out of the ball pit and makes his way back to the kitchen, where he arms himself with a sack full of soda cans and the two taped together pieces of the mop handle. Now he's officially ready to throw down. Okay, this is it. It's time for the final showdown. But after seeing what happened to the sheriff, I'd say that even the janitor here better be careful. Willie here is clearly incredibly strong, so I'd say that his best bet is to use the element of surprise and go in for a sneak attack. He'll want to focus on disabling its limbs if possible, targeting its legs to slow him down, and arms so that it won't be able to attack. Since its arms are so long, Getting in close might actually help to avoid its sweeping strikes, although it would also make the janitor here vulnerable to being grappled. If he's smart, then he might be able to weaken Willy before the fight even starts by luring it into a trap of some kind like throwing a bucket of water on it or using some sticky materials from the kitchen or janitor's closet to mess up its actuators. Of course, there's always the less heroic option of sneaking right past him and making a break for the door. The sheriff's truck is still sitting right outside after all, so it would be simple enough to just drive away. Go straight back to the mechanic, stake the guy out until the repairs are done, and then take his own car back by force. He might have to battle it out with that Slim Jim chewing fraudster to get the keys, but I'm willing that it would be an easier fight than going toe to toe with Willie here. Personally, I'd be getting out of there if I could and letting those townies deal with their own problems, but a good janitor's work isn't done until he takes out all the trash. 
and there's one more pile of garbage left to go. Back in the main room, he comes face to face with Willy once again, but this time he's not taking any prisoners. Using the mop handle to block its strikes, he pummels the robot over and over again with the sack of cans, easily gaining the upper hand. After backing Willy down to the stage, he bashes its head in until the creature can no longer move, before reaching down and tearing its head off with its bare hands. That makes seven animatronics down, with one more to go. By now it's morning, and Tex and the mechanic have returned to pick up the pieces. They're shocked to find that the place is actually cleaned up, and the janitor here has survived his shift. Putting on his leather jacket, he walks up to Tex and holds out his hand, taking back his car keys and leaving the building without saying a word to either of them. Outside, he finds Liv standing there, and the two of them get in his car, driving off while blasting Freebird after doing a sick burnout in the parking lot. Tex and the mechanic are impressed, but they're not home free yet. Yet, suddenly, Siren Sarah appears on the trunk of the car, setting fire to the gas tank and blowing them all sky high. That makes nine victims down, with two survivors, but there's still one animatronic left to go. Meanwhile, the janitor and Liv speed off into the sunrise. To celebrate their victory, he cracks open a can of his favorite soda and hands it over to Liv, who takes a grateful sip. Just then, they notice Tito Turtle hobbling down the road, but the quiet guy floors it, slamming into the robot and blowing it to pieces. That makes all eight animatronics down, and the horror story of Willy's Wonderland is finally over. At least, for now. But what would you do? If you strolled into a random small town, got your tires busted out, found out that they were gonna lock you inside a building and you had to clean it in order to get your car out of the shop, would you comply with this ridiculous set of demands? Or would you just be like, nah, f that, and take matters into your own hands? Let us know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe and check out the other How To Beat videos on the How To Beat playlist, just like this one. And have a damn good day. Thanks again to Dragon City for sponsoring today's episode. Download Dragon City by clicking the link in the description or scan the QR code and get a special bundle with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the epic Ovi Dragon to get you started.